mommy or the babe? What babe? The babe with the power. What power? The power of voodoo. Who do you do? Do what? Remind me of the babe. I saw my baby crying hard as babe could cry. Ooh. What Ooh, could wow. I do? Yeah. Dance Welcome back to the writer's room, dance. everybody. And if you didn't notice, uh, we went and saw the 30th anniversary screening of Labyrinth. Yes, we did. And yeah. yeah. We're coming all the way to you to talk about it. <laughs> For some reason, it's a little bit more sexual than I thought. <laughs> it's the Bowie. It's all the Bowie. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Welcome back to the writer's room. Today, we are very excited to be talking about the 30th anniversary screening of Labyrinth. That's right. That's right. Yes. I'm your Lots host. of music. Uh, <laughs> we dance the magic dance. Yes. That's right. We the night away. I'm your host, Katie. And I'm your host, Michael. I'm Matt. And I'm Chris Ali, and we're coming at you from HollywoodRedux.com. Yes, HollywoodRedux.com. We're celebrating Virtual Reality Month here on the site. So if you haven't realized, IGL Podcast, or video game podcast, is killing it with their virtual reality stuff. we got a ton of HR, uh, HR VR. No, that's the hashtag that we use, but uh, it's probably down there somewhere. And uh, <sighs> But no, they have a, du- a bunch of HTC Vive gameplays and things that they're doing this month. Bunch of original content right. and uh, exclusive game stuff there. So check them out. Please check this out. And use the hashtag HRVR whenever you do. But anyway, today we're talking about the 30th anniversary screening of Labyrinth. Woo! That's right. Yes, directed, oh. by, directed by Jim Henson. The genius. I, I think it's the his magnum himself. opus. I think it's like his Wizard of Oz, his uh, Star Wars A New Hope. It's his, you know, writer's journey, real storytelling did it. masterpiece. It was wonderful. I think. Well, I think it's a masterpiece, not only because it's a fun story and stuff. It's, I mean, it's really out there. I mean, you have to yeah, you either. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people that either love Labyrinth or don't like it at all. So, like, sure. you know, because it's out there for some people. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I think it's a masterpiece because of just the effects that went into it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything Absolutely. in the movie is alive and it's Entire. all practical. Yeah. yeah it, uh, there were so many things that happened in it that were um, so surprising and compelling and, uh, you know, affecting more than any computer generated Absolutely. image that were just so real. You lost yourself in the in the characters, in the world. The world felt alive. The eyeballs in yeah. the wall. Yeah. I mean, oh, and, yeah. And everything. Like the really, it starts out with a big visual effect, too. I mean, yeah. the opening title sequence for that 1986 owl. is incredible. That owl is completely visual effects. And... Uh, Looked amazing. It might be one of the first like fully visual effect like characters. I may be totally wrong about that, but I think that's uh, I mean like CGI. Like it's not like yeah. Yeah. you know stop motion or something put there. It was yeah. Uh, who knows? Somebody <laughs> fact check me. Leave a comment below. Tell me how stupid I am. <laughs> <laughs> but surprisingly, uh, we went and saw this movie, and two of us had not seen the movie yes, ever right. before. These two right. had never seen. I had never seen the movie. So what did you guys think on your first screening? Yeah. Uh, I, lo- I loved it. I thought it was a fun time, and um, I, I will save my favorite scene for a moment. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was a fun time. I saw the movie. All I right, did. Grisalia, what did you like about the movie? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it just made me appreciate Jim Henson, to be honest. Yeah. A yeah. Lot, oh, my God, a lot what a magic. And the creature shop, yeah, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Those guys are talented individuals, and you can tell it just because, I mean, like you said, every character is alive, and every character is different. There is not one exact, like, or repeated character within that. Yeah. So, kudos to the man himself and those guys. The entire yeah. world was populated right. by Absolutely. mainly puppets. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was an yeah. entire world Like, of the man fantasy very the well. The whole you creature can... shop was emptied out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I mean, the, the characters, no matter if they were, like, a full, you know, prosthetic or, like, animatronic or even just hands doing things... Yeah. Everything felt fully alive, like the helping hands and stuff. Oh my god, felt helping fully hands. alive, you know, the and they were just hands, Very yeah. Cool. With the the knockers, the knockers yeah. yeah. I mean, geez, like that would have been a visual effect today, and it looks it like at it one point better. I was like, is that a visual effect? It, and I was like, no, it's no, it's, it's, it's real. real. It looks it great because wonderful. you got up close and you could see their eyes moving. You and can yeah. interact there was with it yeah. about it that was just more immersive. It looks than like olives just moving. Yeah. They did look like olives. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the pits missing. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no I pimentos. The knocker's eyes. Yeah. Well, for your first time screening, what was the thing that you liked uh, outside of the like cool world and everything? Like, what was one of your favorite scenes or one of your favorite characters? Uh, my favorite scene was definitely the helping hands, just because, again. Really cool. Again, Ooh. the helping hands. Every like hand had a personality. Like it was never the same. So. It was really cool face. to see. Like, yeah. yeah like, you had all these hands coming together exactly. also. Exactly. 
the creativity behind it, the genius, the simplicity was just... And oh. the lighting, too. Like, there, yeah. a lot of it was based on the lighting for it, where the eyes would be and the thumbs and stuff. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I and mean, that's what I thought, is that it was actually a real achievement in terms of editing, shooting and editing, too, because Absolutely. the way they shot it and edited it, the way Jim Henson did it, it looked like she was moving down. You, and even yeah. though it was basically them shooting the same wall of hands yeah. over mm-hmm. and over and over mm-hmm. again, just in different orientations, it did feel like they were geographically moving around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would have to say my favorite scene is the bog of eternal stench. And <laughs> Absolutely. Well, who doesn't love three reasons. and a half minutes of just pure you guys, fart? I laughed the whole yeah. Hold on. time. You guys don't understand. I was sitting next to Michael when we were seeing this, and I look over, and Michael's just, like, losing it in the scene. Ah, just... It's everything I've ever wanted to do. He has yeah. such fart joy noise. on fart his noises. face, you guys. Like, yeah. Lots of farts. Lots of farts. Lots of it farts and burps. It was absolutely perfect uh, cinema. A little, uh, yeah. A little dog ran across. It's <laughs> yeah. so uh, high squeaks. Oh, I love yeah. it. Oh, Ambrosius. That's one of my favorite Ambrosius. characters. There we go. <laughs> Ambrosius. He was both Ambrosius. a real dog and a Muppet dog. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I also really like the uh, the creatures, the wild things, kind of. Oh yeah, the wild the, bunch. Oh, the wild bunch. They're were. terrifying and alluring. Scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Hey man, scared the hell out of me now yeah. seeing it yeah. for the first they time. Me. In yeah. a dark room with on the big screen. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Their eyeballs. Their eyeballs. That was the only scene. I couldn't really hear all the lyrics in that song on the big screen. Yeah. No, They're think... all about, it's an ode to uh, the, where the wild things are. There's a little note at the end of it that thanks Maurice Sendak, and so there's there are a bunch of where the wild things are homages, and so it's like basically singing about how like when your real life, when the world gives you problems, mm-hmm. when things are getting you down, you can go hang out with these guys, the wild bunch, chill mm-hmm. down with the wild bunch, and ru- basically run with the where the wild things are and like, you know, get your yayas out. And then you sort of realize the horror of what that looks like. Yeah. And you're like, never well, mind, yeah, I'm they good. Take off their head. Just take her head off. Like, yeah. Disma- yeah, essentially you like know, dismantling yourself. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. then so then she finally is like, oh, I got to go and yeah. uh, see ya. Yeah. I mean, the really cool thing, too, is if you have a chance to see the 30th anniversary screening in theaters, yeah. uh, strongly suggest it. They don't play any trailers or anything like that before the movie, but they do play about a 5, 10, I don't know, maybe 15 minute long behind the scenes look at how they made oh, yeah, the movie really cool. and it was kind of like a nod to David Bowie the whole time so yeah very it was, loving stories about yeah. David yeah very loving stories about how great it was to be on set with him how he'd always go out with the crew afterwards and have a beer, beer. Like, what a nice guy you know, he was in yeah you know it's like he had this such a busy schedule and you know it was kind of nice that like even though it was 12 hour days on a movie set that was still pretty quiet days for him yeah. uh, so he just thought it was a magical time. They all thought it was a magical time mm-hmm. just to be around, and it was really cool. So that is something that is worth uh, the price of admission yeah. alone. Um, so I strongly suggest it. Yeah. It, like, know. for example, he came up, Bowie came up with in the beginning of Dance Magic Dance, which I don't know if you could tell is my favorite number. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the beginning of that, when he kind of grabs the goblin puppet, he came up with that. Like, that was him. He was playing in the space, and he and there's, like, scenes of him and Jim Henson working behind the scenes. Yeah. And yeah. He, it was really Again, cool. something that could probably not be done with CGI today. Yeah. Like. yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it looked tough. And, like, or uh, it looked good. also the world's greatest yeah, exactly. fountain, all the little dudes peeing at the little water hole. I love <laughs> oh, that. Oh, my gosh. Right outside the uh, castle. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's definitely a subversive movie. I mean, you meet, speaking of which, you meet Hoggle when he's peeing. Peeing randomly. in the pond yeah. and killing fairies. And, you know, there's yeah. that, there's kind of like a dangerous element to Jareth, the character of Jareth, too. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's like kind of a subversive movie. It's not necessarily a kid's movie, per se. It's kind yeah. of yeah. an adult movie. It scared tale. me as a kid, you know. Yeah. I I At the same time, terrified. like, nothing has real stakes, you know, like, she's able to evade every challenge that arises. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, there's some... It's for her brother. Yeah. Toby. It's, it's kind of an interesting balance, yeah. yeah. I would have loved to have walked those uh, studios when the production was happening. God. Oh, man. Can you imagine yeah. everything just being ugh, just laid out and being in the process of building? Yeah. That would have been really cool. It would have been amazing. It would be amazing. See the man in action Absolutely. himself. Yeah. Yeah, well, he was able to achieve that. You know, you, you think today of the movies that are getting made, and they can't do big... Uh, things like that with where like, you have like thousands of Muppet creatures. Mm-hmm. Well, they could, but it cost world. a fortune well, yeah. and they wouldn't so have time to do it. Yeah. So, that's, so then you, the answer to that is, well, we don't have the money, you know, it takes too much time, all this stuff. Jim Henson created a studio where he would have the resources to do movies like this. Someday. Yeah. Because that's what he wanted to do and he's able to create something real that is real, that feels real because it is real, on screen that looks better than computer animation. So yeah. I'm 
just, Absolutely. Yeah, when you can take the like, time to make it right, it's uh, it proves to always be the way it is. Lord of the Rings, American Werewolf in London, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This movie. Uh, like he made Jim Henson yeah. the Creature Shop, the studio was like he made that so that he could make movies like Labyrinth, where yeah. it's you get Ludo and Sir Didymus. Ludo. Yeah. And uh, the Wild Bunch and um, I mean, all the Come on, goblins. name some more. Name some no, more. All the, I'm on. just thinking of all the cool, all the goblins, the I mean, worm. Even the mold yeah. on the walls Did inside. You you know? the, no, the wall that I turned into a, a large uh, suit of armor. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. rad. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, so for the writer's room, that's going to do it for us this week. If you guys enjoyed the episode, uh, let us know in the comments below. If you do have a chance to check out the 30th anniversary screening, we strongly suggest it. It's a lot of fun and really cool insight into the making of the film. Right. And it's a Please great homage it. to Mr. Bowie, yes. where he's in the stars now, but uh, it's good to remember like what he brought to the table, which is somehow making that look really cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So for the writer's room, that's going to do it for us. I am Matt. You can find me at Splashdown1 on all social media. I'm Kazali. You can find me at Kazali on all social media. I'm Katie. I'm at K. Moles. And I am Michael, and you can find me at What the Hess. And we are coming to you from HollywoodRedux.com. Check out all of our other shows, the IGL podcast, which is coming out tomorrow, and the K-Files podcast starring these two wonderful ladies. And uh, check out all of our gameplays on Thursdays and all the other content coming out to you from Hollywood Redux Virtual Reality Month this week right. and month. <laughs> the entire month of September is Virtual Reality Month. Please so click subscribe. down below, guys. Subscribe, like, like comment, and share. And let us know if you like the episode and what else you'd like for us to talk about here on the Writer's Room. So we will see you next time. Thank you so much for checking us out. Bye-bye. See you guys.